Guys, I'm excited because I'm talking about one of my favorite math concepts. Based on what I've seen from you guys at school too, you feel the same as me. We're talking about probability or we're talking about chance. Um, there's so many fun games, tests you can do that link to probability, but I just want to go through a few of the basics so we've got them down. So, when we talk about probability, we're talking about the chances of an event happening. So the easiest way to describe it is if you flip a coin, there is a 50-50 chance of you predicting what's going to happen. Because in a coin toss, there are only two options. It's either going to be heads or it's going to be tails. So your odds of predicting it are even, which means it's one over two, because we know there's a half chance of you getting it right. With a dice, a standard six-sided dice, there are six things that can happen when you roll it. When I roll my dice, I can either roll a one, a two, a three, four, five, or six. So if I said to you, please write down for me, what are the odds of rolling a three on a standard dice? We know that there are six possible options. We know that only one of those options is a three. So the odds would be one over six. And it would be the same no matter what number I said. If I said, what are the odds of rolling a one? Again, it would be one out of six. If I said to you, what are the odds of rolling an odd number? Then we would go and identify all the possible odd numbers that we can roll. So it'd be one, three, or five. And then we would know there are three chances of rolling an odd number out of a possible one, two, six possible combinations. Now we know that we can simplify three, six to one half as well. So there's a 50-50 chance of rolling an odd number. Sometimes you get questions that say, what are the odds of rolling a one or a six? And in that case, you just find the two options or outcomes that have been identified. So in this case, it's a one or a six. So I know that there are two possible outcomes two possible um, options of rolling either a one or a six, and that's out of six. The only thing that some people do wrong sometimes is they go, okay, so I'm rolling a one or a six, so that means it's two out of, and then they only count the outcomes that aren't the one, so they'll say like two out of four, but that's not how you do it. In this instance, the denominator is the number of possible outcomes, and then this one is um, how many of them are your predicted outcome. So what's your prediction? So if you're predicting you're going to roll a 1 or a 6, then that's two possible um, predicted options out of a possible 6 in total. I just said the word possible a lot then, and it got a bit confusing. Another problem that you get asked all the time in unoriginal maths problems is you'll be given a picture that has a bag of marbles. So here I've got some expertly drawn marbles, and they are in a nice circular bag. And you'll be asked things like, hey, what is the odds of choosing a yellow marble. So in this case, the numerator would be the number of yellow marbles, so it would be a one, and that's gonna be out of the total number of marbles that you could choose. So if I reach my hand in blindly and grab one, I could grab one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 possible marbles. So there's a one in 10 chance of grabbing a yellow marble. Then you might be asked another question like, what are the chances of getting a green or a blue marble so in that case, you just go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 and 4 is 7. So I know there's a 7 out of 10 chance of grabbing that. Then sometimes you get asked a weird question where it might say like, which one of these is the most unlikely marble to grab? And in that case, you've got to look for which one is sort of uh, the smallest in number. And so then the answer would be yellow. It's pretty easy when we describe probability, really. Perhaps my favorite probability event to talk about, though, is the standard old coin toss. And you might be asked a question like, what are the chances of you correctly predicting two coin tosses in a row? And to work that out, we do a probability tree. Again, I don't think that's what they're actually called, but Miss Lee and I kind of came up with that, and I think it describes it. So you, what you would do is you'd write down all the possible outcomes of coin toss number one. So coin toss number one, you're either going to get a head or you're going to get a tail. There are only two possible outcomes. I suppose it could land on its side if some sort of fluke event happened, but really, that is highly unlikely. Then in the second coin toss, you've got to think to yourself, well, if the first coin was a head, the second one can either be a head or it can be a tail. And if the first time you flipped it, it was a tail, the second one's either going to be a head or it's going to be a tail. So what are the odds of you correctly predicting two coin tosses in a row? 
Well, it's either going to be a head and a head, a head and a tail, a tail and a head, or a tail and a tail. So let's say I predicted a tail and a tail. That's one possible outcome. Well, that's one outcome that I've tried to predict it out of a possible four different options. So there's a one in four chance of getting two in a row. Sometimes drawing a probability tree helps with some more complex problem solving ones that require you to write down a diagram. I'm really excited about working on probability. I think most people have got a really good handle on it. I'm looking forward to playing some games in the classroom that prove it as well. What are the odds of me enjoying maths this week? Very high.